53 seconds. It's a long amount of time, at least in the context of a 22 minute TV anime. And it's also precisely how long episode 22 of Neon Genesis Evangelion forces us to watch two characters standing nearly completely still in an elevator. And depending on who you ask, this scene can mean a lot of different things. For some, it's just another obtuse example of Hideaki Anno's quirky directorial style, but for others, it's the perfect encapsulation of everything wrong with Neon Genesis. While the show is to this day still widely loved and celebrated, the series has over the years garnered many detractors, and this scene in which for the better part of a minute we're staring at what essentially amounts to a still image is the perfect example of how Evangelion is really little more than a slightly above average mecha show crippled by a low budget and saddled with a director who had no real idea what he was doing. But is this shot really devoid of any particular meaning? Is it actually just a way for the studio to save money, or is there more to it than that? Well friends, let's talk about that. So to give us a little grounding here, let's tackle first the question of did Evangelion actually have a low budget? And to do that, it's worthwhile taking a little look at the show's production. Production on the 26 episode anime began in 1993, originally envisioned as a far more straightforward mecha show than it ended up being, various factors led to the show taking a far darker, more cerebral path than was originally intended. And a big part of this was Anno's emotional state at the time. After his experiences of directing 1990's Nadia and The Secret of the Blue Water, as well as the failure of his previous project, a cancelled sequel to Royal Space Force, the young director fell into a severe four year long depression. And as the production of Evangelion went on, this aspect of Anno's personality would only become more prevalent in the show itself, veering further away from a more traditional mankind versus an extraterrestrial threat narrative that was originally planned to a deep exploration into consciousness and the human condition. Which ultimately, I think, was a far more interesting direction for the show, but would prove disastrous for Evangelion's production. Unlike Anno's previous series, the fantastic 1989 Gunbuster, Evangelion was written entirely episode to episode, meaning that by the time writing was finished on episode four, Anno had only the vaguest, most basic idea of what would happen in episode 5. And while Anno is certainly the creative lead on Evangelion, the show is actually animated and produced by the staff at Gainax, who could only work on a section once Anno had signed off on it. And as Anno's vision for the series began to change, this would become more and more of a problem. To the point that the original conclusion to the show, with the human instrumentality project being stopped by an angel attack from the moon, was replaced by something far weirder. And on top of this, in 1995, a national incident would occur that would cripple the production's ability to output on time. And this was the infamous 1995 sarin gas attack. An atrocity committed by a Japanese doomsday cult on a Tokyo subway that killed 12 and injured 50. And according to the staff on Evangelion, the events of the tragedy resemble too closely an in-production episode of Evangelion, and so the entire episode was scrapped, which would have put tremendous strain on both Anno and the staff at Gainax to create a replacement, which had a knock-on effect for the rest of production. And so, the staff fell drastically behind, culminating in the now infamous final two episodes, 25, The World Ending, and 26, Take Care of Yourself the vast majority of which are reuses and storyboards. So yeah, certainly, Evangelion had some major production issues, but notice how none of them actually stem from a low budget. There's no documentation to suggest that this was ever the case, and when you look back at the show's earlier episodes and the level of animation quality that's inherent to them, it's highly unlikely that the show actually did have a low budget as so many people speculate. And so the limitations felt by the show in its second half were not financial constraints as much as they were more complicated problems of both Anno's personal life and creative process, all pressurized by external events that were completely outside the control of the studio. But regardless, it is safe to say, however, that the production of Evangelion was suffering severe limitations in its later episodes. 
episodes. And I don't think it can really be argued that these limitations wouldn't have had a major effect on the way these episodes were made. But the question I have to ask is, is that really a bad thing? Limitation is a core part of any creative project. Manpower, technology, skill, any number of factors can weigh on the creation of a piece of art. And often this limitation becomes an inherent part of the end product itself, as limitations create barriers that artists are forced to find creative solutions around. Solutions that often end up being more interesting than a more conventional approach. Take pixel art, for example. Pixel art is an entire type of art born from limitation. Originally, computers only had enough processing power to generate a very tiny amount of pixels on screen at any given time. So pixel artists had to ensure that the placement of each individual pixel, which is a tiny digital dot of color, had a clear and distinct purpose. As technology advanced, so too did the number of pixels possible in a given sprite. But what wouldn't change was the ethos behind the technique. Pixel art, more than any other digital medium, requires a hyper-focused intention on the part of the artist, as each pixel needs to be carefully placed to achieve the desired effects, resulting in some beautifully intricate designs wholly unlike any other medium. Now, imagine that that technological limitation had never existed in the first place. It's highly likely that pixel art as we know it simply would not exist. In other words, limitation breeds creativity. Simplicity breeds intent. And you don't have to look far in any medium to see this same idea proven over and over. From the now iconic stilted animations of South Park to the wealth of small scale films that do and say so much more than their big budget counterparts. Take one of my favorite examples of this, the 1997 German horror movie, Funny Games. The film, through rigidly on-point pacing, staging, and dialogue, creates a violently shocking and oppressive story, achieved with nothing more than five actors, a dog, and an empty house. But to talk about its most relevant scene for the purposes of this video, we need to drop a big spoiler warning right here. About an hour into the movie, our protagonists, a married couple, lose their son in what we'll call a sudden and unfortunate circumstance. And rather than an elaborate set of shots focusing on the actor's facial expression that would require a complex multi-camera setup, we get this simple single shot, which creeps on for an agonizing 10 minutes and 13 seconds, in which we slowly watch the parents come to their senses, realize what's happened, and fall apart at the harrowing realization. And what's so beautifully, heartbreakingly effective about it is that by forcing us to stay in this one camera shot, the audience gets no release from the horrific event that's played out. Like the child's parents, we're trapped in this awful situation, with no cutaways or chance for reprieve. And so even though very little actually happens over the course of this scene, there's still a wealth of meaning and directorial intention behind it. See where we're going here. Episode 22 of Evangelion is one of my favourites of the entire series. The episode focuses nearly exclusively on Asuka, and serves as both a turning point for her, as well as the complete breakdown of her character. Originally introduced into the series as a genius for her skill in piloting mechs, by this point in the story, Asuka's complicated, abusive relationship with her now-dead mother has slowly begun to eat away at her, and because of this, her ability to control the giant Evangelion units has started to wane, causing Asuka's test scores to plummet and fall below Shinji, and even Raze. And this disgusts Asuka. Despite the fact that there's no direct reward to her outdoing her fellow pilots, she defines herself with the belief that she is better than them. And when that belief gets taken away, it tortures her. And rather than acknowledging her own shortcomings, she turns that self-loathing outward onto Shinji, Misato, and especially Rei. And it's all these deeply uncomfortable emotions that hang thick in the air as Asuka steps into the elevator with Rei. And we watch as the two characters endure the disdainful silence. But rather than cut away or focus on close-ups or scene details like he does in almost every other scene of this kind, 
Anno holds the camera stationary and in doing so traps us in the deeply uncomfortable silence that exists between the two characters. And he lets us stew in this silence for 53 agonizing seconds, creating the very genuine feeling of an actual uncomfortable awkward moments. And in doing this, making Asuka's feelings of frustration, anger and hatred feel real and palpable, which is vital given how this entire episode is about Asuka's mental state and its decline. Further proof that this was in fact Anno's intention is that, aside from a slight head nod, the scene remained completely unchanged in the director's cut version of the episode, which ran for a total of 27 minutes and wouldn't have had the same time obligations as the original broadcast version. But still, Anno chose to keep the scene the same length, most likely because the scene was already functioning exactly as Anno intended. All this said, however, one thing I want to make perfectly clear is that it's not like I don't think this shot isn't the result of compromise. I think it absolutely is. I don't think this scene or many others like it in Ava's later episodes would exist if both Anno and the staff at Gynax hadn't faced the problems they did. But I also don't see why this needs to be seen as a negative. I think there's something really special about shots that work with so little and yet strive to convey so much. Whether it's the self-destructive resentment a character feels for the world around them communicated through a single silent shot, a heartbreaking choice between loneliness and annihilation communicated by a simple still image, or the very core of the human condition depicted in simple, surreal, beautiful sketches. It's these imperfections that made Ava feel real, like something that was built by real people in a real studio. This human touch that gave a genuine sense of strife and pain to a series nearly exclusively about the conveyance of strife and pain. And I don't think the limitations that brought about these scenes make them any less important or any less powerful. Rather, it's in these pauses and imperfections that you can see the personal struggle of the show's creator and the problems he faced reflected the most clearly. And to me, that's what art's all about. Even if it does mean staring at an elevator for 53 seconds. Friends, that's going to do it for today's video. Once again, I'd like to thank you for joining me today, and this will most definitely not be the last time we talk about Evangelion on this channel. And if you enjoyed this video and would like to help me create more like it, then consider heading over to patreon.com slash super eyepatchwolf, where you can see your name listed with my beautiful supporters right here. This week in particular, I'd like to thank M. Wall E, Virtual Citadel, Full Beans, Stella Chu, and God Emperor Zubaz. You can also find me on the Let's Fight a Boss video game podcast or on Twitter at iPatchWolf. Friends, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.